In this Rhino Grasshopper tutorial, I want to show you uh, how you can model these panels of the RMIT design hub building and see how easy it is to design this in Rhino and Grasshopper. So first of all, let's just take a look at the building. So these are the pictures, as you can see here. Again, these are the details. And you can see that the panels just rotate around an axis, axis line like this. So let's just go to the next one. And you can see the details again here. And again, you can see the panels rotating here. And uh, so, and you can see that these are the units which have been just connected to each other. Okay, so let's just go on and you can see these are the details. So, uh, what I want to do is to show you how you can do this in Grasshopper. So, if I just change the location of the point attractor, you can see that the uh, results are going to just change. So this is going to be also a small tutorial of how you can make this in Rhino Grasshopper. motors operate on the building management system, they provide us with a voltage of 1 to 10 volts. If they provide us with a 2 volts supply, that in turn tells the motor to open at a 20% angle. If they provide us with a 5 volt, that provides the motor to open to a 50 degree angle. Just before we start our tutorial, for those who are new to our channel, uh, you can just watch this video, which I will put up here, if you want to know what Grasshopper is and how it works, what's the difference between Grasshopper and other 3D modeling softwares, and I will also put another video up here, which is one hour, and you can learn about Grasshopper as the beginners and know the tips and tricks of how to use Grasshopper. And for those who are our course members, they can also go right up here. I will also put the latest uh, tutorial lesson, which I have added to the course, parkourse.com, up here, which they can check it out. Okay, to start from scratch, I'm going to go to the circle center radius, which is here, and I'm going to also use the vertical one because I want to draw a vertical circle so i'm going to hit vertical the center is zero and if i just hold the shift key i can use the ortho in the x direction okay assume that this is the unit 
So if we want to make the panels, we can simply just type array. You can also do this in Grasshopper, but for the sake of making this easy and on this um, and for the sake of making this easy and understandable, I'm going to model the base of the curves in Rhino. So we go for the array and select the objects. And the number in the x direction may be 12. And in the y direction, we don't need. So 1 is fine. And in the z direction, maybe 12. OK. So we have to give the x spacing. We can just uh, have on the mid. Remember, you have to turn on the O snap here. So if I just put that is as the x direction and put this as the z direction, you can see the results. We can also change this easily by changing the uh, number here. We can change the x number and the z number. So let's just do that. Maybe we want 24 two times in the height, or you can simply just change the x number. OK, so after making the, those circles, we have to put them into Grasshopper. So let's just go here. And in the Parms menu, choose the curve. And let me just put the bifocals plugin so you can see the names. And I'm going to right click and set this to multiple curves and right click or space and because i don't want to be dependent on the rhino canvas i just can right click on the curve and put the internalized data on so let's just internalize the data and delete those circles okay so after making this we simply want to rotate these circles and if you want to extrude them you can also type ex and extrude them and in the y direction so we can simply just go in the y direction and give this maybe a thickness so if you want to make that border as you just uh, watched give them border as you just saw in this image you can just simply extrude that okay so back to the okay back to the tutorial uh, now what we want to do is to simply rotate this circle. So if you want to draw a line in the uh, z-axis z of these circles, you can also, just for learning two uh, components, I'm going to go to the curve section and use the point on curve tool and connect this to the curves. And you can see that this is the zero and it comes down, it reached uh, maybe 25%. So I can go just right click on the point curve and choose this uh, one quarter here and three quarters here. So remember you can just uh, choose the top and the bottom of the circles by this. Let's just go for quarter and again a copy, control C, control V and the three quarters, okay. And now if you want to, you can simply just draw a line with two points, which is called the line between two points and we can simply just connect those two lines okay so now you can see that this is the axis we want to rotate the circle so uh, after doing that we can simply just type rotate and in this tutorial we just need the rotate axis because we want to rotate the circle around the line so we can simply just type rotate axis the geometry we want to rotate is this circle the axis is this line and you can see that the uh, input just has the line as the rotation axis which is fine and now what we want to do is to give this an angle so remember in the grasshopper we always have a degree so it's in radians we have to just change that to degrees so let's just do that and what we want to do is to make this happen with the point attractor so i'm also going to show you how you can do this with a point attractor. So let's just do that. We can go to the surface and choose this bounding box tool from the primitive section. And I'm going to connect this to the circles. And what will happen is that it's going to produce a bounding box for all of those circles. But we want a unified bounding box. So I'm going to right click on the bounding box and choose the union box. So let's just do that, union box and we will have a complete surface covering these circles. Okay, now uh, for the point attractor, uh, we can simply just uh, go here in the surface and use the evaluate surface tool. If you don't know about the evaluate surface, I'm going to also put a tutorial right up here, which you can watch and learn more about the evaluate surface. So 
uh, we can just evaluate this surface. Remember, we have to reparameterize because we want to make this from 0 to 1 and 0 to 1. And the evaluate surface tutorial, we talked about the MD slider, which we can simply give a multi-dimension slider to the point, which is a UV point. And now you can see that we can cover all of this surface. So assume that this is the facade. We can simply start from here to that corner and just cover everywhere. Okay, now what we have to do is to uh, go for the, let's just turn this off uh, and turn those points off, preview off. Okay, here we go. The last step, what we have to do is to use the attractor techniques. If you don't know about the attractors, again, I'm going to put a similar tutorial right up here, which is related to attractors. But for now, we can simply find the distance between the center of these circles from this point attractor. So what I want to do is to just uh, extract the circle center. You can do that by going to the surface and use this area tool, or you can simply go to the curve section and go for deconstruct arc and connect that. You can see also you have uh, the base plane, which we can just use for the uh, center. If you want to use this, deconstruct arc, you have to connect a point to the base plane and you will have the center. Uh, you can also just go for simply an area centroid and pick up the center. Okay, so now what we have to do is to find the distance between the point attractor uh, from the centroids. Again, I have talked about this uh, in the attractor tutorial, which I just put up here in the card section. So again, what we have to do is to type distance and find the distance between the centroids and the point attractor. Okay, here we have them. And now what we want to do is to change the distance because this distance is going to give you 386 degrees rotation, which is not good for our rotation. And what we want to do is to scale the number. So I'm going to type this. Scaling the number is easy. If we want to just multiply that with a number, so assume that we just multiply that with 0.1.1, that's going to give us 38 degrees, uh, 35 degrees, and so on. But the best part is to use the remap. Uh, again, if you don't know what the remap is, you can watch this tutorial I will put up here, which is about the remap. And what we want to do is to simply just use the remap tool. So I'm going to remap this distance from uh, basically you can use the remap numbers but uh, the remap plus tool which I have made is easily done by uh, combining uh, three tools so if you want to also download this remap you can always head to parametric3d.com and backslash en backslash remap so remember you can always download this from this address and we can easily say that the uh, distance, the smallest distance is going to be maybe zero degrees because we don't want any rotation and the forest circle can be 80 degrees. So let's just give this an 80 and it's going to scale the distance between zero and 80. Okay, we can give this to an angle and let's just turn off the area centroid and you can see that this is going to rotate. Let's just uh, go to the params menu and connect the surface so you can see the results. Okay, let's just bake that into layer one. And let's just go to the shaded mode. And also let's just bake the extrusion into another one. And let's just close this. So you can see that this is actually rotating based on, on a point attractor. Uh, for those who want to know more about this attractor thing, uh, you can also flip the minimum and the maximum right here and make the nearest rotate more. Or you can also have the graph mapper. Again, I'm going to also put the graph mapper tutorial up here, which you can uh, make this go out from a linear distribution. So remember, you can also have waves on this or anything else. Okay, so now we can simply just rotate. Uh, these panels based on a point attractor and if you have if you want to have multiple point attractors or a curve attractor or an image attractor you can also go to our para course uh, and we have a complete series of attractors tutorials which have talked about how you can use the attractors 
uh, in designing with Grasshopper. Okay, so that was uh, the tutorial and thank you for watching.